In many cultures of the ancient Near East, women had very few rights or privileges. Land, power, and honor were passed down from generation to generation through the males, often the firstborn. It is within this context that we are given the spirit of, or the story of the Israelites, God's chosen people, whom he desi- who designated as his own, separate from all other peoples. From time to time in various biblical stories, we see treatment of women differing from that of women in other cultures in those times. The Hebrew nation originated as a result of God's call to Abraham to leave his home and father a chosen nation. Within this covenant, God gave Abraham's wife special recognition. Although Sarah was both elderly and childless, a sad fate for a woman in ancient times, the Lord promised her the joy of motherhood. Her descendants are found around the globe today. When Moses led God's people out of Egypt, his sister Miriam, also a prophet of the Lord, served served the people as worship leader. Exodus 15.21 In Numbers 27, we learn that Moses sought favor from Yahweh for a a family of sisters who approached him with a well-reasoned case for their inheriting their father's estate since they had no brother. Two books of the Old Testament are named after women, Ruth and Esther. One is the story of a Gentile woman who marries an Israelite. The other is of an Israelite woman who married a Gentile. Their stories are tender accounts of redemption and love, featuring strong, heroic women who save their families or even the nation at great personal risk. And then there is young Mary, who was visited by an angel and told that she would, in fact, be the virgin that had been prophesied hundreds of years earlier, Isaiah 7.14. Before she ever even knew a man... The weight of parenthood settled heavily upon her as God commissioned this young maiden with the responsibility of raising the Son of God. In his earthly ministry, Jesus often took time to to tend to the plight of women who had been marginalized, to those who suffered the burden of making ends meet in a society with very little opportunity for women to provide for themselves. On some occasions, these women included prostitutes, Luke 7, 36-50, those who had a series of husbands, John 4, and the ritually unclean, Mark 5, 25. But Jesus never cared what the religious elite said about him, or these women. He listened, he looked them in the eye, he treated them with tenderness and dignity. And he turned the tables on their accusers, suggesting that maybe those accusers were not as innocent of wrongdoing as they thought. John 8, 1-12 As a result, these women's lives were changed. We can be certain that they told their children, their husbands, and their extended family what Christ had done and who he was. That Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. John fourteen six. In a remarkable passage in the New Testament, Paul teaches that there is neither slave nor free, male nor female, Galatians 3.28, in the culture of Christ. While men are called as leaders of their household and caretakers of their wives, Ephesians 5.25-33, they are not elevated above their wives in some sort of spiritual ranking. Women under the covering of their husbands have an important responsibility to represent the message of the gospel to their guests, their families, and perhaps most significantly to the next generation. The daughters of God that Paul spoke of were homemakers, businesswomen, and associates in ministry. There was no stereotyping of a Christian woman. In Jesus' view, all women were valued partners of his great commission. The place of women in the Bible is prominent, and the Christian view of women is countercultural. In many ways, the conditions for women improved among people who came to Christ in the first century. And this improvement continues in our own day. People in the church have not always acted in a manner that is in accord with biblical revelation. But when the revelation of God is followed concerning women and men, then we will find, or we, then we will afford honor, distinction, and significance to women, God's daughters. If they believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, they are his daughters, in fact.